my name is Brent Lovato, and today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D model in Autodesk InfoWorks. So we're going to go ahead and start by opening Autodesk InfoWorks, which I already have opened here. We're going to start by opening or creating a new model by going to this button right here. Next, we'll specify a location to save the file, and this works fine for now. And then we're going to title it. And then give it a description. So go ahead and create that. So once it loads, you'll see a blank, a blank screen like this with no data in it. You just see uh, water and sky. So we're going to begin by adding the terrain, which is the first step of creating any model. So I'll go to data sources, and this is where you load all of your data into the model. So you'll see this this icon here, just go ahead and click on it and go to raster because our terrain model is in the, is a raster file. This is where I stored all the data for this project, so I'll go ahead and go to our raster file, which is an ADF, and I'll hit open. It takes a minute to load, but then it shows up in my data source uh, tab, and I have to configure it by double clicking. So up here you'll see the name of the file, the source type, and also the type of feature it is. So it could be another feature such as land cover or imagery, aerial imagery, but it knows it's terrain because of the file. So the coordinate system is already put in, so we don't have to ch adjust that at all. So to load this file, I go ahead and hit close and refresh, and it should appear on the screen. You'll see once it loaded, it has these um, loading signs still, so it's still taking some time to get into the program. But once it does, it will it won't load any anymore after that because it'll be imported completely. While this is loading, I'll go ahead and import another data source. So the other thing we're going to import into this model are the buildings, and we have a shape file um, that contains that data, and that's this one right here, buildings ETM. So once again, the status is not configured, so I have to configure it before it's imported into the model. And you'll see that this one's imported even though it's still taking some time to uh, display. So you'll see again the name of the data, the source, which is vector now, and then the type I have to set to buildings. And again, it could be an, any type of vector file. So you have to specify which one you want to use, and that determines what type of uh, parameters are set. You'll see the parameters down here for buildings. Um, so the name you can set to any field or any record that is an attribute table in the shapefile. Um, it's not necessary, but for here we'll just say building name. Um, and then again, it's possible if you have a record that says the roof heights of each building in the shapefile, you can set it to that field. But this one doesn't, so we'll just set it to uh, 10 feet for now. And we can change that manually later. So once we have all these set up, we can go to geolocation, which once again specifies the coordinate system, and this is perfect because this will work with our terrain. It's the same as our terrain uh, coordinate system. And then the source is pretty important because you want it you want it to drape on top of the surface. So go ahead and set drape for you probably want to do this for most of your all of your sa shape files because everything should be draped on top of the terrain. So once you have that set, I'll go ahead and go through these real fast. Um, a tool tip is when you hover over an object and you see a little pop-up box and in the pop-up box you can have a link to a website and this will it'll direct you to your uh, browser for, uh, so you can view other uh, data uh, associated with the object and you can program this for visual or HTML and this is just a simple properties table for the data set you can see different options for translation and scaling and rotation and also um, geometry and styling. Lastly, there's a script, a JavaScript editor for all these pro uh, properties. So if you don't want to set it in here, you can just do it through JavaScript. Um, and you can see some of that here. Um, so but we're not going to do that for now. I'm going to go ahead and hit close and refresh to add and import the buildings layer. So the file is still loading on display, but I'll go ahead and load in another um, raster file, so I'm going to overlay the aerial on top of the surface, which will be very easy to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open, or in try and import another raster file. So I'm going to navigate to that, and it's the tip 
right here or the open so once again it's imported uh, right uh, yeah right here so um, shut down so I'll go ahead and configure this and so it knows it's a raster and it also knows it's ground imagery and once again important this is correct and if you go to raster you can see the different bands that are being displayed so it's uh, red green blue which is uh, regular color and so I'll go ahead and go close and refresh and it should load that right on top of it and you'll see it's a one and a half meter res um, ortho photo from US US so you'll see here uh, the model has started to load with the terrain and the aerial draped over the terrain if I uh, zoom in here, you'll see the buildings also starting to uh, uh, protrude from the surface there. Yeah, so now it's starting to take a more realistic uh, shape and vibe. If you keep if you um, keep modeling objects in here, become more realistic. And I'll show you in the present model that I made um, how to add different features such as vehicles or roads or um, telephone poles, which I have in the other model. I'll go ahead and open that one now just to show you because um, this model seems to be having some trouble loading currently because I'm running the video recorder at the same time as the video. So I'll go ahead and just open the other one and show you how that looks. So you'll see now that I created this model, it uh, has its own icon here in the local models window on the, op on the open screen. Uh, and you'll see that it hasn't loaded the rest of these tiles yet. Uh, for some reason, but I'm going to go ahead and open the other model which is finished. So you'll see this loads very quickly. Um, it has the complete model with the one aerial snippet that you can see here, and as well as the buildings which I've gone in and edited and created the roofs. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how to create a roof uh, that's pitched real fast. Uh, I'll do it on this one for example. Uh, so you start by selecting it and you can just, it's just a normal left click to select an object. Um, and then you'll see the properties uh, tab right here, which you can get from this drop down. So you click on the eye, and then you click on this tab, and then it drops down, you click properties, and that displays this window. Um, so to change the roof slope to make it look more like this roof here or this roof, um, you can just go ahead into the properties and type whatever value you want for the roof slope, uh, and you just click update. And you'll see if I unselect you hit escape you can unselect and then if you rotate you can see that there is a slope on that roof now and it's um, a pretty simple process to do that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that real fast and then show you something else okay and so another another um, important thing to learn within Inforce is just basic editing of, of objects and so in order to get to editing I went to uh, import the eye icon and then the drawing icon and then edit. Edit allows you push and pull editing in 3D space so you'll see translation with these um, with these bars you'll see blue uh, as the z-axis and then red and green as the x and y and there's also a square here you can use to translate that way and then uh, control z to undo your last move and then you also see rotation um, on each corner so you can grab a corner and then rotate it however you like and then there's also the corner um, polygon selectors so you'll see these these uh, purple uh, little points and you can click on one and drag it to change the overall ge geometry of the object uh, and lastly one of the I'd say the one of the features that I use the most is the push pull so this is a Z extender so it, it pulls the object to a certain height or shortens it to another height and I use that quite frequently especially if you have um, if you have buildings without height data in the record you'd end up pushing and pulling them to fit whatever size you think um, they should be at Another fun feature to um, put into your model to make it more realistic is uh, water or ocean. You can create an ocean by going to the Create Edit tab right here, and then going down to um, 
rivers or water areas. Water areas is what we did here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And you'll see the two different types of water areas. Although you can create more uh, with a style palette, um, it's easier just to start off with this one and it looks very good. So we'll go ahead and just click on that. Um, and I'm just gonna draw it over on this shore so you can see what it looks like. And this is how um, drawing of polygons looks in, in most cases within InfraWorks. You'll see a point, you click once to start it, and then you can drag it in any direction. Um, and then you click again to create another vertice, and you'll see the polygon being created. Um, I'll click again a few times just to show you what this looks like. And then to end the polygon, you double click. And so now you see that this water area is here. And if I escape, you'll see what that looks like right there. And that's the same, the same procedure as it was with this area. And also, if you have a, a water body shapefile, you're able to import that also and use that as the water. And you just change the style of the, the polygon to water. So I'll go ahead and delete this one again. So another thing that's in this model is um, city furniture. That's the category it is. Uh, you'll see that icon right here. And so within city furniture, you'll see cars and bikes, um, all kinds of automobiles. And there are also site features, trees. There's a lot of vegetation to choose from. Uh, construction cones, construction um, shapes basic shapes for marking. We have freights, signs, markers, people, telephone poles. So what I did here is I selected this telephone pole and you'll see you'll see if I zoom in here, you'll see this telephone pole I placed there on top of the line that you can see with the satellite imagery. So to place it you just double click and then you can use the same edit features that you did for the building. So you can rotate it or scale it. You can also make all these translations inside of the properties window, which you can see right here. So if you have the actual um, the translation in a record, you can set this this um, value in the properties window to that record, and it'll place it where you want it automatically upon import. So another feature you can see here is this road that I've drawn. Uh, this is based upon a single line with a bunch of different vertices along and I drew this by hand but you're also once again you're able to import it from a line file or shape file uh, I'll show you real quick how I did that uh, once again you're inside the create and design features tab and you go down and you go to roads so there's a lot of different types of roads once again you can see stone and concrete and sand with a uh, those bridges. Uh, I'll go ahead and just uh, click the standard. So you, you'll know when you're in editing mode when you see the crosshairs. And if I want to connect, say I want to draw, draw this road right here and I want to connect it to this one, I go by just starting one click here. And then you'll see my line, my road with its width being drawn. And if I click again, create another vertice. And if I want to end it right here and double click and you'll see it created this merger between the two roads. So the program knows when you're connecting roads and it's able to create this, uh, this feature, th uh, this engineering um, feature for that. last feature I have in this model are the cars which are just for supporting uh, visualization and making it more realistic um, but they're they're unnecessary uh, for analysis and whatnot um, so yeah this is a basic 3d model with buildings and city furniture and water and terrain I uh, hope you enjoyed enjoyed the video thanks